Hello and welcome to this episode of the Star Wars Universe podcast. Today we are talking about Mario Kart racing in the Star Wars Universe. Yes, we're talking about The Bad Batch, Episode 4, Faster. All that and more with myself and Aaron McGowan. After this commercial break, we have no control over Welcome back. I'm Matthew, your host. I'm joined, as always, on the Bad Batch episodes by Aaron McGowan. Aaron, how much was pod racing? I know you've talked about how much you like the uh, prequels. Were you a were you a pod racing fan, or did you not love that scene in the in Phantom Menace? No, I loved it. Like when I uh-huh. was a kid, that was everything to me. Like I okay. okay, I'm gonna be honest. I watched it again this year, and it was still everything to me. Like I was so excited. Nice. I was so into that pod racing. Like I understand why other people might not be as into it. It can seem like a time waster, but like mm-hmm. it's just the amount of excitement I needed as a kid to like pay attention to the rest of the movie. Look, I think, you know, the things that we love as kids stick with us. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't get it at all because I watched it as an adult and I watched it when I – there was so much world building that I wanted them to do, so yeah, it felt like a waste of time. Mm-hmm. But I still have so much love for the original Death Star trench run scene, you know, in A New Hope. And frankly, like, the new additions be damned – I like the real original version of that fight where the ships are jerky and like you can tell it is models being played with by hand, but I, it's everything I love, you know? So I, no hate to that. Um, obviously, we're talking about this because in this episode of The Bad Batch, the primary focus of the episode is, uh, in this case, it's speeder race instead of a pod race. And I actually liked it a lot more. <laughs> I thought it was really well done. Um, it's a center part of the episode, but obviously there's a lot more going on. It's very much a tech episode, which is uh, kind of fitting if you're watching uh, Aaron's TikToks these days. So let me just ask this, though. Uh, kind of overall, what do you think of the episode? Um, yeah, I really liked the episode. I felt like it was a very good kind of like side quest episode. Like it doesn't very much so. have too much to do with the overall plot, but we get to know – and see just more of our, like, skill set from, like, tech, and we get to learn a little more about, like, Sid's past and, like, what that might have looked like. You know, maybe she right. is shadier than we think. Can we believe this guy, this Malagi, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is a good time to actually give a quick episode summary for those who are listening uh, later and are like, trying to remind themselves, or if you haven't seen the episode, you're not going to watch the show and you just want to kind of keep keep following along. Uh, basically, as you said, this is a, it's a side quest episode. Uh Hunter and Echo are not even in the episode at all. They're off doing something else. And it turns out that Sid is in some problems with people from her past. She owes them a lot of money. And um, she has entered someone in what are – it's speeder racing. It's not pod racing. And I I don't know if you had this uh, this, uh, uh, reaction to it. But to me, it looked so much like Mario Kart racing in terms of like you pick what tunnel you're going to go through and like some are more dangerous or some are faster and you go up some like hills and jumps and stuff like that. I loved it. It was it looked like a lot of fun. They all have weapons. They're all shooting each other. Um, but the point is that she's got this – her racer is a droid and she's racing to try to like erase her debts and she's going to be a lot of trouble if she loses. Of course, her droid does lose. Uh, in part because they do like some bad shenanigans to it weapon wise. Uh, but it seems like that's kind of just part of the race. Um, mm-hmm. Fair enough. And they're all worried about her, especially Omega. And she convinces Tech that they should help try again. And Tech is able to both use his tech skills to rebuild the racer, the speeder, but also it turns out is quite a pilot himself. And so the meat of the episode is the, is the kind of, you know, the building of the racer getting ready for the race, the race itself. We got a lot of good tech action. And of course, tech winds up winning the race. We rescue Sid. And it's just the term side quest, I think, is really effective. And it, for me, is giving me what I want in this episode, in this series. You know, I don't want it to be, I loved Andor and I love the depth of Andor. And I like that this is giving us some real depth as well. But I like that we're getting just the day in the life. You know, this is just what life is like when you're kind of out on the outskirts among the kind of huts and the scoundrels and the people like that. And you're right. We got to learn more about Sid. We got to have a lot more of tech, which I think was fun in a lot of different ways that we'll talk about. Um, Yeah, it's overall a solid episode. Yeah, I agree. I liked it. I like to see a new planet, Safatoma. It's always fun to go to a new place rather than being like, oh, we're going to go to Tatooine and do pod racing. Like, I feel right. like 
that could have been an easy out. But instead, they're like, no, we're on Safatoma and it's riot racing. <laughs> yep. Riot racing. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. But I agree. It's very like Mario Kart. It's very mm-hmm. fun. They have the whole like in the tunnels, they have like things shooting out in front of them, trying to like block them. They have little yep. electrode like shocks that they have to fly around. It's just fun. Yeah. Definitely yeah. is, definitely is. And, and if Mario Kart or or some of them doesn't have a reskin to, to this at some point soon, someone's leaving a lot of money on the table because yeah. I would buy that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so let's talk about tech because you, you had made some comment, I think on this episode, uh, you had made some comments, I think on earlier episodes, but especially on some of your own social media about how happy you were that tech was getting some attention, particularly from one of the, the women characters we got introduced mm-hmm. to in an earlier episode. Uh, talk to us about like uh, your, your tech feelings going into this episode and, and why you liked uh, – talk to us about your tech feelings going into this episode and what you thought about him really getting his own episode for the most part. Yeah. I mean, so what I had posted on TikTok was just me being really excited that we have some tech thirst in the mm-hmm. mix. Um, that pirate that's friends with um, Sid, her name's Fee, kind of hits on him in the first episode. And it was just a little thing, but I was like, oh, I want more of this. Like, I want to, I want more about tech. I mm-hmm. want more about how he interacts with other people because, you know, she hits on him and he's just, it goes over his head and then he makes some scientific comment and she's like, okay, right. I'm out. <laughs> she, she's, she says, what pretty brown eyes you have. And he's like, all clones have this phenotype for yeah. like, you know. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so Tech's just, like, ready for this race. He has complete confidence in himself. Um, They have this little quote where it's at the end. Omega's like, you did it! You did it! And Tech goes, you sound surprised. Yeah. He's, like, a little (laughs) offended by it. He's like, come on. Like, I had that in the bag. Yeah. Um, And the best part, he says that, but he doesn't come off as arrogant. It's not like, Mm -hmm. why are you surprised, baby? Of course I was going to do this. He's like, just, just, no, it's, it's... And and for me, it kind of – I feel like we, we talked in the first episode about how we felt like him and Echo weren't really well developed in terms of them being separate. They were a little kind of overlapping in the role they played. I really like that they listened to us clearly because we're getting a lot of tech zone development. And for me, his character is becoming the like – really helping to illustrate something that's very important to me of the difference between mansplaining and just autistic info dumping. And yeah. like, th- there's a lot of gray area between those two. Don't go get me wrong. I think they can overlap quite a bit. And and I'm someone who's autistic, and I've certainly in- info dump, and I've I've had to learn when that's appropriate and welcome, and when maybe it's not what people want to hear, and that's totally valid as well. But I think it's easy to see anything like that as mansplaining and as arrogance and as like looking down on you. And tech very much isn't that. Tech is just. Like, it's golden retriever energy almost. It's, he's just super excited about the things he's super excited about, and he's got all this information that he knows, and he wants to share it with people, both because it will be helpful and because he thinks it's interesting. And as someone who has been that, um, not as smart as him by any means, but <laughs> as someone who's been that, I've also seen a lot of my friends who who are that, not always associated with autism, not always associated with autism, but often so. And often seeing that being very judged and very sort of stigmatized and looked down on, I really love seeing that be celebrated for him. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's good to see it as like a positive thing and not him rambling in the background. Mm -hmm. Like he really is the hero of our episode. Like, right. He's the one who made it happen. Yeah, because I think I think that's you're right. Often he is kind of the like he'll say one interesting thing and that helps the group. But then he says five more things and then someone has to make a kind of comment cutting him off. And you're right. He's kind of the rambling comic relief. And so mm-hmm. it, it's really nice seeing him just get to be celebrated like that. Yeah. Lovely episode for tech. My favorite part of the episode. <laughs> I didn't notice it until the second watch through. But um, is when I think it's after the first race that they lose and the bad guy, Malagi, or not bad guy, but he's. Used to be mm-hmm. friends with Sid. Now they clearly have this tumultuous past that's dr- driven a wedge between them. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so him and his thugs kind of come up. He's got a Transocean on one side and a Gamorian, Gamorian on the other Gamorian, side. Yeah. Gamorian, yeah. And Wrecker kind of like reaches for his gun. And Tech typically has these two guns um, on his hips, just mm-hmm. the double blaster type thing. But no, today he had just like one gun at the back of his belt 
Mm -hmm. And he just like slowly reached around. And that was just so I was like, that is such a fun little place to put your gun. That makes you so much more interesting and spicy. And that's really sexy to me. And I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I just like really liked that. (laughs) I was Clone like, thirst not is like always going to be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It was fun. It was interesting. And it, 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 John Wick is a character in and of himself, and I'm not putting him on that level. But it, it, yeah, it made him like it's it's the kind of move from soldier to like super spy or assassin, you know? Mm-hmm. Of like this is now more about like going into a place and being ready to go to combat at a moment's notice, you know? Yeah. Um, so. Definitely feeling the like bodyguard bounty hunter. <laughs> Type, yeah, like role that they've fallen into. Exactly, exactly. And I just think it was fun to see more of Sid and to see more of kind of the criminal underground stuff. One thing that the Clone Wars really established is that during the period of the Clone Wars and the period leading up to it, there were a number of these very large criminal entities that were basically kind of like na- you know, kind of like nations or huge organizations onto themselves. Often they had their own planets. Uh, the Huts being one, uh, Crimson Dawn being another. Um, I think Black Sun is a third, or is that? Yep, the a, yeah. Black Sun, and then. And then what's the fish people one? Um, the spice people. What are they called? Right. The they're they show they they show up in live action actually quite well done in Book of Boba Fett. Anyway, you'll look it up. They're, I'm going to call them the fish people for now. Um, it, it's on the name tip of my tongue. I think it starts with a W, but. We haven't really seen much. Well, we know the Empire is cracking down on a lot of those things. We know the Empire is, for the most part, letting the huts be the huts, but that they're, they're cracking down on a lot of these other things. We know from Solo that some of them are still alive and going, and that Maul is still very involved with them. And and even by Rebels, we know they're still around, but it was just fun to get to see, like, okay, what's – this person maybe is plugged into one of those huge networks, or maybe is just kind of doing their own rebel scum, uh, re- uh, scum and villainy thing on their own. So, yeah, I just liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. I looked it up. It's the Pike Syndicate. The Pike Syndicate. Thank you. P-Y-K-E. Are... I don't know why that was yep. so hard. Like, I, I know this. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you as well. I I'm swear, I hit well. record and all my, like, Star Wars knowledge goes out the door. I'm like, Look, I promise we, I'm smart in this. <laughs> we, we promise you on this podcast that we will give you, like, thoughtful analysis, that will give you, like, character reflection, that will give you thirst, and Aaron blushing <laughs> about talking about thirst. Uh, the exact names of things, well, Google is your friend, my friends. <laughs> That's yep. not what we're here for. Um, uh, we will mix up the like TDXY3 and the TDXY5, uh, different, those are just ship names I made up, but you Mm -hmm. get the point. Anyway, so there wasn't really, I mean, it was a fun episode. I really liked it. I don't think there's much there for in-depth analysis and our, our bonus content today is actually really interesting. We're going to be, we're going to be going a lot more in depth about crosshair. Uh, so for the patrons, you'll get to hear that. For everyone else, really great opportunity to sign up for the Patreon and we'll, um, uh, give a little bit of a teaser for that before we sign off. But Aaron, was there anything else about this episode you wanted to bring up before we wrap up? Yeah. Um, one thing I thought was really interesting is we learned Sid's name, Sid's full name. Mm. When um what's his face? When Malagi comes up to her, he addresses mm-hmm. her as Sidaran Scaleback. Yes. So now we know that. I was just like, ooh, Sid is short for something. Also, Scaleback, really creative last name for a Trandoshan, guys. <laughs> you know, they're it's still better than Tim. That's t- <laughs> you know, Tim with a double M. Like oh th- God, there's always <laughs> there's always been a little bit of this weirdness that people have these names like Han and Lando and all this, but then there's just Luke hanging around. Luke. Which George Lucas, he's like as someone pointed out recently, I hope I hate the whole idea of a Mary Sue, but if there's ever been a Mary Sue self-insert character, it is George Lucas creating Luke. Yeah. Um, but you know, so scale back, not the best, most inventive name, but but here we are. Yeah, and I would just say I think as much as I love them as a team and I love the dynamic, I do think that, especially because Hunter and Wrecker are both such big personalities, as is Crosshair. That you kind of needed to have Hunter and Wrecker off screen to be able to allow, or I guess Wrecker is still there, but uh, having a Hunter off screen mm-hmm. um, to allow Tech to really shine, I like. And I want to see lots of the whole team together, but if we get some more like solo adventures and some of the individual characters get to shine a little more, I definitely wouldn't mind that. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. It was a nice way to like, yeah, put the spotlight on them because – I think if Hunter had been there, like, even mm-hmm. if he's just kind of in the background, he's just, he's going to draw everyone's attention, you know? 
He really is. too spicy for that. He's just going (laughs) to be all mysterious and dark and broody in the background, and I'm not going to be able to pay attention to all this character building we're getting from Tech. I wouldn't have noticed Tech's sexy little back pistol. (laughs) I wouldn't have noticed. (laughs) When the tattoo is there, it's hard to think about other things. We get it. So, yeah, I think that's kind of a good place to wrap up discussion for that episode itself. Um, and we'd want to have kind of a longer conversation about Crosshair. And most of this is going to be in the Patreon content, but let's just get it started here because we love talking about Crosshair. We had a lot to say about Crosshair in our last episode. But then, Aaron, you found a quote that I think really kicked us off in some great conversation. Go ahead and read that quote. Yeah. So it was on, I believe it came from Tumblr. No, it came from Reddit. <clears throat> and it's just titled Crosshair as a Victim of Abuse. And it says, I've seen a lot of people wonder why Crosshair doesn't just leave the Empire, especially when everyone around him is jumping ship and leaving him alone. But if you strip away the sci-fi and Star Wars elements, you'll see a situation that many of us have dealt with or have witnessed. Crosshair grows up in an environment where all of his basic needs are taken care of, where he can excel in his unique talents to the best of his Ooh. where he can excel and use his unique talents to the best of their ability, but all of that is conditional to him sticking to the program, to doing exactly what he's told, because if he doesn't, then all the good stuff will be taken away and he'll be punished. And then when Order 66 happens, Crosshair's one unit of support, his brothers, leave. Now they leave for their own safety, but Crosshair doesn't see it that way. He just sees it as they leave him and never make some daring rescue to, or attempt to rescue him. And in the Empire, the same pattern he has always experienced continues. Do what is asked of you and you'll be rewarded. Don't, and you will die and be thrown away. Crosshair surviving for over a month on that platform just reinforces this. He didn't want to do what the Empire, or he, sorry, he didn't do what the Empire asked. He was bad. And it's only out of the Empire's goodness that they decide to give him a second chance. Yeah. This hits so hard for me because it, it really resonated for me in the idea of like something we talk about a lot. The reason why I love Star Wars is – I mean the space battles are great. The the wizards with the laser swords are fun. But it's the fact that it it, it puts in this crazy world with laser swords and you know Trandoshans and, and Gamorreans and all these kind of things and the Empire and Death Stars so out of our uh, experience. But still, anybody who has dealt with – um, you know, abusive family or abusive church or, or, you know, being born into situations where this is the way you're taught, like you have to be good and behave. I, I feel like that that quote so perfectly explains why Crosshair is so relevant and can really resonate with so many people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that and I immediately screenshot it and sent it to you. I was like, this is what we've been talking about. It really is. It really is. So we're gonna get in more we're gonna get into more of that in the Patreon bonus content. Uh, great reason to sign up for Patreon if you can. If you can just a couple bucks a month, you can support this podcast. Hear our bonus content, all sorts of great stuff like that, as well as be thanked on the air. Even get some merch at higher levels. Uh, even help us choose some episodes and stuff like that. You can find all that just by going to Patreon.com and searching for the Ethical Panda. I believe is how it is. Uh, but you can find it in the show notes and the links. You can also find it on our webpage, theethicalpanda.com. On that webpage, you'll find also all the ways to contact us. We love feedback. Let us know what you're thinking about these episodes. Let us know how this is all working for you, what you're liking about Bad Batch, what you're not liking about Bad Batch. Totally disagree with us. Uh, if you were the one screaming at the at the radio in your car, it's the Pikes. It's the Pikes, you idiots. <laughs> Let us know. We love the feedback. Um, and of course, if you're not one of your patron, that's totally great. There's other great ways to support us, what we're doing. Leave us a five-star review. Share it with your friends. Help us get more people in the conversation. And I'm lucky enough that I have a great guest who is uh, doing a lot of other great creative stuff that I'm learning so much from. So, uh, Lady Tano, can you tell us a little more about what you're doing creatively? Yes. So, I do cosplay stuff on the side. My name is Lady period Tano period creates on Instagram and also on TikTok. Um, lately, I've been trying to make a new headdress for Ahsoka and I'm trying to teach myself how to sew and it's not going well. So I wasted four (laughs) hours last night and then I sat on my bed and I cried for a while. And then, (laughs) I mean, you have to let your frustration out when you spend Uh so much time trying to do something. And I I was trying to sew together a slip over the leku and it just wasn't fitting. It was just too small. Mm -hmm. But I went downstairs and then I was reminded that my aunt bought me Ahsoka's lightsaber hilts. Oh, that's so cool. So that was my Christmas gift from her, which was so sweet. I was just out of town visiting, and that's where I got them. Um, mm-hmm. 
So yeah, now I have like her screen accurate lightsaber hilts to use for pictures and stuff. I'm so excited. And nice. they're 3D printed, so completely plastic. I know a lot of cons actually ban metal or like mm-hmm. metal weapons, which makes sense. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited about that. And if you want to see me continue to try and fail at things and succeed at <laughs> a few things and hear any thoughts I have about Tech or Hunter or any of our spicy hot dad batch, um, mm-hmm. go ahead and follow me. I do that mostly on TikTok. Otherwise, on Instagram, I just share some memes sometimes. Um, I did want to take a moment to shout out another cosplayer, actually, who I just mm. found this week, um, who has a really good tech. Um, her name is Lily Bean Cosplay. And that's okay. L-I-L-Y, and then bean spelled bean in cosplay, um, with periods in between the words. Um, yeah, I just saw this really cool video of her doing kind of like the animated like tech run and like pointing her guns around. And I was like, that looks oh, so, so cool. cool. So yeah, give her a follow if you're into tech. Definitely. We'll have that in the show notes. I also just got to say that everything you said about like the, you know, the, the, the struggles you're going through, I love Yoda so much. And I so totally disagree with the idea of do or do not, there is no try. Because I think what you're doing, like, you're trying, you're learning. Like, it's Mm -hmm. frustrating as hell, but it's how we learn. It's how we grow. So that may be another episode at some point. But uh, definitely check out all the things that Aaron is doing. Check out that other person, uh, Lily Bean. And most importantly, uh, if you're a patron, stick around. We're going to get more into that discussion of Crosshair and that quote in just a moment. For everyone else, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being great fans. And have a great day. (laughs) 